Welcome to the second part of the video. This is actually post recorded because when I started to put the second part together I realized that I hadn't explained anything anywhere on video so probably some of this is not going to make sense if I don't give you a little uh, idea of what I'm actually trying to do here. So this is the point where I probably disappoint a lot of people because there's already been talk in the comments for the first video about horsepower and the right components and so on. Um, and this is not going to be a max horsepower, max RPM, see how fast it can go kind of build. While I would love to have a ton of horsepower, uh, the goal here is to make something that I can actually ride around. And I'm not saying that I have to have a touring scooter here, but I would at least, I live about 10 miles from the nearest town that's actually anything in so it's fun to ride around sometimes. I'd at least like to be able to take it that far without having to put it in a truck or something. And my understanding of the hyper race stuff is that they really aren't meant to just ride around. And I assume that it's going to, there's going to be kind of a scale to exactly how crazy your uh, setup is to how much you can probably use it uh, for real world use. But one example is I remember talking to Jack Cecil who uh, is a member of the forum and also has a YouTube channel here. And he has a 30 plus horsepower uh, too fast build. And I, I think it's 30 plus because of nitrous now but still it makes a lot of horsepower even just on the motor. And if you've seen his videos, he goes out and he races, he's raced like a Ferrari and all kinds of cars, and he'll just drag race them, I think it's about an eighth mile, something like that. Anyway, so I, I said something to him on the forum at one point about actually riding the scooter, um, because I have people on the forum that have hyper race scooters, but I don't really see a lot of people doing a whole lot of riding, so I'd ask him if... Uh, what he thought about riding a scooter like that around and he basically said no I don't even want to take it into town um, so what I got from that is pretty much that scooter its job is to go out into the industrial lot uh, industrial complex parking lot and kick some ass and then be parked again and wait till there's somebody else to race and that's pretty much what it does that's its life which I love watching it, it's really fun to watch, um, but I don't really know what I would do with a scooter like that, so I'm trying to just make something I can at least ride a little bit. Um, what that means to me is I'm going to try and sort of detune it, for lack of a better description, um, and I also don't want to spend a fortune on parts, or maybe not that I don't want to, but I just can't spend a small fortune on parts right now and so I'm going to try to make it work with things that I have. So one of the things I have is a peace pipe and that is an exhaust made by 190 mech on the 49cc scoot.com forums. Um, his name's John. Really smart guy. Uh, seems to know anything you need to know about a two-stroke and pretty much anything else. Um, and He made this pipe for me many years ago. I don't even honestly remember how many years it's been that I've had this thing. But it was first made for um, initially what was a, I think 85, 86 cc. Um, it was a Polini Sport 70 kit on a 45 millimeter stroke. I'm not even sure where that comes out to anymore. Um, but that was a failed engine. The, uh, the durations and the amount of porting I did to that thing. I made the exhaust port so big that it just snagged a ring on the first rides. So that one was a fail and it ended up going to a 103cc 54mm um, bore and 45mm stroke instead that I also ported the something like near 200 uh, exhaust duration and that engine would rev to about 12,000 RPM but only until I got an overrange kit and once I got an overrange kit it stopped at about 10.5. Um, it just seemed that the uh, overrange kit wouldn't let it over rev like it used to with a more standard transmission. Um, but it, it ran harder actually with the overrange kit so no complaints there but 
that pretty much showed me that the actual power quit around 10 and a half thousand RPM for that big engine. And that's pretty much been the story with every large 90 to 110 cc engine that I've built is they really don't seem to want to rev beyond about 10 to 10.5. Um, so over the years that pipe, he's been kind enough to adjust that pipe and that's basically where it has evolved into something that is intended for peak power um, about 9,000 to 10,500 RPM. And that is the exhaust that I'll be trying to use with the Hyper Race kit. Not really sure exactly what it will support. It may rev higher than that and it may not. I don't really know. And in that same, uh, in keeping with that theme, I'm also going to try to use a stock ignition, which everybody with a Hyper Race kit uses a inner rotor ignition. Um, Again, I don't really have $400 sitting around to go buy a digital direct. Um, and aside from that, I actually like the idea of having a real charging system that works. So if I want to ride the scooter for hours on end, I don't have to worry about, well, my batteries can't support this, etc. And I currently have a DC charging system on the scooter. I've converted the uh, stator over to full wave. And I've been very happy with that for the headlight being bright all the time and stuff like that. So I have no complaints there, and I'd just like to see if I can keep that, especially since uh, I'm not really trying to rev it much beyond maybe it'll go around 11,000 RPM. Um, and if I were going to rev really high, that the flywheel would be a problem, because another member of the forum, uh, his name was I White Totals, uh, he had a Polini 94cc uh, Big Evo few years ago and he actually tried to use that as a daily rider and he tried to use it with a stock flywheel and stock ignition and it actually worked with the stock ignition but he ended up uh, blowing apart the flywheel it actually shook the rivets right out of the thing um, because the stock flywheel was never intended to rev 14,000 rpm so I'm thinking I might actually be able to get away with a stock flywheel as long as uh, the cylinder doesn't dominate it and the exhaust kind of takes over and it probably quits around 10,500 RPM, somewhere around there, maybe 11. I think that should work because plenty of people use stock ignition systems with 10 to 11,000 RPM builds. So, the next section of the video, I'm going to be working on making the uh, exhaust fit the uh, 86cc cylinder because the flange is a little different, um, the bolt spacing was a little different on the 86cc versus my 103cc and any other cylinder I've ran it with. Um, it was about 3 millimeter wider, so I think I had 48 millimeter center to center, eye to eye, whatever, um, spacing on the stud holes on most of the engines, and then the TPR had 51 millimeter center to center, eye to eye. Um, so I'm actually working on getting a new flange that John provided me to fit on that and then you'll see me working on the flywheel as well to make some improvements but I wanted to clarify this this stuff so you guys kinda know what you're watching and understand that this is not going to be a 25 horsepower build I'd love it if it was but it's just not gonna make 25 horsepower with these components so there's where it stands uh, let's get into the work John, that's the guy that built the piece pipe, was kind enough to supply me with a spare flange some time ago. So I found that, and I'm going to try to make that fit the top performance cylinder. And I'm going to just do a simple etching using pen and paper, get myself a template so I can see where I should drill the holes just to make sure it's correct for sure. There's my template that's a pretty exact match here for the exhaust flange. Then I can take that and lay it over my header flange and then I can figure out 
how to best position it and where to drill the holes. Hopefully you can see, if I just try to position it so that both of the holes for the mounting bolts are in kind of the most central area here, then I get a lot of overhang in one area where the header would have to be modified, the flange would have to be modified to match up to the cylinder. So what I'm going to do is just twist that a little bit. So with it twisted a bit, I've still got plenty of meat here around the bolt holes. I don't have to worry about the flange being weak. But I kind of compromise and put a little bit of the overhang here and a little bit of the overhang here. And I think that's enough that I can actually port the header to match up with the cylinder pretty well without hurting anything. Both holes are drilled now, and there's one thing I, that I wanted you to take notice of, and that's that these holes are drilled just barely above the size of these bolts. So there's really not much wiggle room with either of the bolts. The reason for that is that if you port match something, if you've got big holes or slotted holes, then this can move all around and it can actually throw off the port match. So it doesn't do a whole lot of good to port match if this can then move all around on the cylinder. But if you drill these very tight to the bolts, they're going to be stuck in one position. And there's really not going to be a lot of wiggle room and it should always match whenever you uh, bolt it up. The only thing with something like this is that because it's not perfectly centered in each of these, it will be specific to whether it mounts this way or this way. So one way it's going to match up well and the other way you're not going to have a very good match. I'm just going to use a simple little trick to make sure I don't mix up which way this header flange mounts to my cylinder so I can always see it. I'm just going to use my punch here and I'll make a mark here on the flange of the header. And then I'll make one that corresponds to that on the cylinder. So now whenever I need to mount the header to the cylinder, I can just make sure that these two dots align. Even though I marked it from that template that I made, I don't trust that 100%. So what I want to try to do, now that it's actually bolted up, is just to go in there with this scribe that has a 90 degree end and I think I can get behind the lip there on the header flange and try to mark the mismatch this way. Probably hard to see on the camera but I did get a line scribed around there so I can see my mismatch and I can go ahead and do my porting. Once it's finished up, I bolted it up again, and then I can feel going in there that I don't have a bunch of ledges like I did before, and I can also look through the front of the port and see that it's a lot better match, and I'll show you pictures of that. I luckily have one small taper flywheel because the crankshaft for the TPR is meant for the Yamaha so they use the small taper and pretty much everything else I build is a clone engine with a large taper like most of the 90cc's have and most of the uh, late model or later model uh, Chinese 1E40 QMB's and I also happen to have a crankshaft here I can't even remember what it was out of, but an entire crankshaft that has a small taper, small splines, and 10 millimeter wrist pin. And I want to lighten this flywheel to maybe give me at least a little help with the uh, high strung engine. 
but I can't fit that in my mini lathe. So I'm going to try to chop this crank up and use that to be able to mount the flywheel into the lathe. trying to get this as close to true so sticking on the zero as much as possible as close as possible to zero and it looks like what happens is it basically stays near zero and then it's not a gradual thing right when it gets near the reluctor here there's a dip and then as soon as it gets rid of the reluctor it goes right back and it stays near zero the whole time so apparently that's about as good as I'm gonna get it So here's the finished result from cutting the flywheel. Uh, obviously I can't get this strip because of the reluctor here, but otherwise I cut a millimeter and a half off of the outside edge here. And I cut just a little bit of the face. I cut about a millimeter deep here. Uh, I didn't want to go very far in and interfere in any way with the mounts for the water pump drive and definitely didn't want to get anywhere near the rivets. Plus, it's just kind of at the uh, near the end of its capabilities with a mini lathe, and this was about the end of my stroke that I could get from the way I had to adjust it just to work with something this diameter. And I didn't bother to try and readjust and get any closer because of the other reasons. Plus, the most effective area to remove weight is going to be the outside edge. So I figured I probably got most of the gains that I'm going to get this way. And again, this is going to be nowhere near like running an inner rotor or even a small flywheel but I figure it has to help some. Oh, and in case you were wondering about the weight of the flywheel, me too. Um, I actually totally forgot to weigh this before I started. and uh, This is the only one I have like it, so I can't even weigh one similar. But really it doesn't matter. It is what it is. I've done light and flywheels before. Actually, I've had people light and flywheels for me before, and I know that it makes a small difference, and that's basically what I expect here, regardless of what any uh, scale shows.